Whew, all right, here it is. We saw it last year at the Geneva Auto Show. This is the new Jaguar I-PACE EV. And we're gonna test drive it. Obviously, the conditions don't look super ideal. It's all white, it's snowing out, it's cold. But these are real world conditions. What people really wanna know when they're buying an EV. Let's go. This weather just doesn't know what it wants to do. One second, it's coming down, sheets of snow, and now it's opened up, it's sunny. We've changed locations here. So let's have a look at it. What do you think, first of all? Personally, I wasn't quite sure when I first saw this in Geneva a year ago. And after driving this for the last few days, it's really, really growing on me. What I like about it is, it's an unusual design, but it's not too radical. It's not way out there. It doesn't look futuristic. It has a, an elegant stance still. And starting from the front end, we have standard LED headlamps. Optional are the more advanced LED headlamps. Then you have the traditional uh, Jaguar grille, except if you look closely, first of all, it doesn't need a grille, right? Because there's no internal combustion engine. So this, is kind of just a fake grill. It's solid, but it curves up and goes right through. Where does it go through? Through this opening in the hood or bonnet, which basically it takes that air and just funnels it through for better aerodynamics, and it goes right through. Under the front hood or bonnet is a small storage area, and when I say small, it's, it's pretty small, like a loaf of bread small. You don't expect a big, huge, cavernous uh, frunk like you have in the Model S. On to the side here though, we have on this one, optional, 22 inch wheels. They're huge. These also have the carbon fiber inserts. Here's your charge port here. And on the side, you'll notice the door handles that when you lock it, they retract. And if we open it up, they come out as well. Also down below here, you have this bicolor insert and it runs the length of the side. I like it, it does break it up. And if you look at the back, you have this shoulder area and I really think this does emulate a cat. Think of the rear shoulders or, you know, of the leg of a cat. Look, this thing is just squatted down, ready to pounce on something. And the wheel base, you can see the wheels are stretched to the max from the front to the back. There are very, very, very low overhangs. And onto the back, it is quite stylish. It comes with standard LED tail lamps. This one has a roof spoiler, has a little lip spoiler here. And you can see that everything's very uh, sharp. Like this is almost straight up and down this rear end here. And what that does is it really accentuates, like I said, these shoulders of that rear of that cat. Rear window though is fairly flat as well. However, there is no rear windshield wiper. I really do wish that they did have that. There were a few times that I, I, I'd like to actually clear some things away, or maybe some a little bit of light frost. No tailpipe, obviously, because this is an EV. If we open up the back, this has a power tailgate. All the I-Paces have power tailgates except the base model. And for this caliber of vehicle, I really think that they should all have power tailgates. Uh, I know they want you to get into that middle trim. That's probably the reason, but anyways. Quite a bit of room in length and width. Depth-wise, there's not a lot. It doesn't go very deep because of course you have those batteries underneath which take up some room. If you need more room, you can fold those rear seats down. And underneath here is just a small storage area. You can put your charging cables there if you want. So, that's it. All right, on to the inside, which I really, really like. Why? Because this is traditional luxury elegance. Even though it's an EV, not like some of the other competitors out there, kind of like the Tesla, which I do like Teslas, but they're just so Spartan, those interiors. It's a screen and a steering wheel, and that's pretty well it. I like 
to have a little bit more than that. I like something in front of me, which in this case is a 12.3 inch configurable gauge cluster not really a gauge cluster but a screen that you can configure you can put uh, your gauges up there your trip your navigation you can make it so the entire thing is a map so really easy to use and this is also equipped with a head-up display in case you don't want to look down there and speaking of screens then you get to the touch duo screens in the center it's a touch screen, of course. It could be easier not having to go through so many menus uh, to change some things. We'll get to that uh, when we start driving. This does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the screen is very clear. It does have a backup camera with a 360 camera as well. Below that, you have this floating console, and that's where you get the duo the second screen it's a five inch screen and most of what it's for is for the climate control and on each side is your temperature control these knobs have different duties though if you pull for instance you can control your fan speed and if you push it controls your seat temperature so in this case we can put the seat heat on to three or this has ventilated seats so we can go all the way down to three there but we're not going to turn that on right now it's it's kind of cool out so that is really neat and it's easy to use so i don't mind it as much you don't you're not having to go through menus or anything like that below that you have your transmission gear selector what's odd is that on most vehicles if you have a console shifter for automatic park you go to the top drive you go right to the bottom this is backwards. To me, this is totally backwards. Park is at the bottom and drive is on the top. I don't know the reasoning behind that. I wish it was reversed. I really do. Uh, I'm sure that you'd get used to it, but after a couple days, I'm still kind of getting confused here. On the other side of that, you have your drive mode selectors, which we'll get to when we start driving. And then you have two buttons to raise or lower the vehicle. So maybe you want to lower it for easy access or loading something in, and you want to raise it to get over some obstacles. This is also active as well. So it'll do it by itself. For instance, if you're going at a higher speed, it'll automatically lower the car uh, to get better fuel economy. And this air suspension comes standard with all eye paces. This vehicle is also equipped with a cold climate package, not surprising with the climate out here. So it does have heated seats, heated steering wheel, which gets nice and toasty, and also a heated windshield. If you look really close, you can see actual element lines going through the windshield. And what that is good for is instead of using your defrost or your fan, by heating the windshield, you can actually save more electricity, which means more range there's ample storage room in the glove compartment the side storage you have this area un under the floating console so you can put things there like sunglasses your phone uh, speaking of phone you'll see here here's your cup holders there's a slot in the middle where you can put your phone perfectly fits in there or you can put your phone on the side or there's also this pad so this pad covers up your cup holder. Maybe you don't have a drink and you can just place it right there. It's rubberized. It's not going to go anywhere. There's also a huge panoramic roof. When I say huge, it basically is the length of the roof. It's huge. It's tinted so it doesn't get too bright when the sun is out. I do wish that there was a shade that would go over it though, but I think that it's tinted enough that it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So overall, I really like the interior of this I-Pace. You really feel like you're surrounded in a cockpit. I like some buttons. I don't like something too Spartan with just a screen. And the styling is really, really nice from the speaker grills to the double stitching and just the blend of all the materials they've, they've used. It just works very, very well. And this is what a luxury vehicle should be, regardless if it's an EV or not. Okay, we're in the back now. There is a surprising amount of headroom. Probably because this roof doesn't slope back until the very back and then it goes totally straight down like we saw on the outside. But a lot of room, especially 
I can kind of see why they put this big panoramic roof because it kind of saves, you, you feel like you're, you've got extra room for your head here because it's kind of carved out. So leg room, lots, headroom, lots. Uh, I had my daughter in here. She had no problem with her leg room. This one also has the climate control in the back as well. And very similar to the front are these, these temperature control buttons. And below that you have a 12 volt and two USB ports. I didn't mention when we were up front, this iPACE has six USB ports. I give that a thumbs up for sure. By the way, you might've noticed my jacket says Jaguar. Why? Because about a year and a half ago, I won a driving contest put on by the Art of Performance Jaguar Tour. And this was the prize. And I've been waiting to wear it, but it hasn't been cold enough. And now it's cold enough and I'm driving a Jaguar. So perfect. All right, family day in the Jaguar. We've started it. Obviously no sound. By the way, if you want a more traditional sound, let's say of a gas engine, you actually have a setting in the menu where you can actually induce a, a, a noise into the cabin. We just have it on regular, not on dynamic right now. So there's no noise other than the uh, heating system. We're going to hit that drive button on the top. It really should be at the bottom. And off we go. And once again, this weather is a real mixed bag. It's snowing again, but it's a good chance to to test drive this in the snow again. So Hello. powering this Jaguar underneath, of course, are the batteries. There's a 90 kilowatt hour battery underneath. It's slung very low as usual. So the center of gravity is very low. I apologize if there's some excessive noise in the background for these two monkeys back here, but uh, it's a pro D day. There's no school today and this is the only day I can record this. So we're going down a hill right now. And like most of you know, with EVs, it has regenerative braking. And this one on the Jaguar, you can set for low or high. We haven't set for high right now. So when I let off the accelerator, it okay. slows down dramatically. And if we put on low, it's, it definitely is not as much. It's more like a coast. So if, you're, if you want something more traditional, you want to put that on low. Also, another feature it has is called a creep function. Hello. So if you are in traffic, for instance, and normally you put your brake on and when you let off the brake, the vehicle will automatically kind of creep forward. You can turn that off. So it'll just, you actually have to hit the accelerator to go. So once again, if you really want that more traditional feel, that's, that's good. The only thing that I wish though, are these two functions, you can only access them through the menu. I really wish you could go, for, especially for the regenerative braking, to switch from high to low. Something on the steering wheel uh, would be great instead of having to go through a menu because sometimes I feel like I want to have more regenerative braking uh, to have a, that one pedal driving experience and sometimes I want to coast. By the way, if you have a theory or if you know what's more efficient, make a comment below. I've always wanted to know, is it more efficient to actually regenerative brake? Let's say there is a stoplight uh, about a football field away and I'm driving to it with regenerative braking on high. I'm, I'm going to have to power through that whole way. But if I coast, I could stop halfway through and coast all that way. My theory is that if you coast, let's say you're halfway to that stop sign, and if you coast, you're gonna save more electricity or energy than you will gain by regenerative braking. That's just my theory. That's not a scientific theory whatsoever, just what I feel. If you know the answer, for sure, comment below. So the magic question when you're talking about EVs, what's the range? 377 kilometers from a full charge, by the way, to do a full charge, it's gonna take about 12 hours. You can roughly get about 40 kilometers per hour on a level two charger. I don't have a level two charger at home yet. I think I should get one though. Um, so plugged into a regular household outlet, it's probably gonna take you better, closer to like about two days to fully charge it. But uh, we've been driving at about 50, 
60 kilometers a day and I've plugged it in overnight and we seem to get about the same amount of charge back in. Uh, so obviously your range is going to depend on your driving style, where you're driving. Right now it's snowing, it's cold outside so we have uh, the climate control on, we have the wipers going and uh, also depends on what kind of uh, terrain you're driving in. If you live in a very hilly area you're going to use a lot more energy as well. One thing you'll notice is how quiet it is in here. There's a lot of acoustic glass, a lot of insulation, so all you're left hearing right now is a little bit of road noise from those winter tires and two naughty kids in the back. Earlier we mentioned on the right side of the floating console there are some drive mode buttons. So if you cycle through them, we have Eco, and eh, we don't want that, that's kind of boring. We got Comfort, which I've been driving in mostly, and then of course you have Dynamic. Dynamic does make a marked difference, especially in the acceleration. Obviously we're not going to go too quick right now because the conditions are not very good on the road, but just a quick, uh, just a gentle touch, this thing just rockets forward. You know, when you're driving something, you want to be connected. Without having all the drivetrain loss and everything, having an electric car, it's the most connected you could possibly be uh, with your pedal, your foot, to what really happens. It's instant and it's very, very addictive, regardless if you're driving this or a Tesla Model S or Model X or Chevrolet Bolt, EVs are just like that and I can really see the huge appeal, not just for fuel savings and those zero emissions, but just that type of acceleration. One nice thing is the performance for acceleration definitely matches the exterior style of this Jaguar. It really wants to pounce. So zero to 100 kilometers takes only 4.8 seconds. Visibility is fair for the I-Pace. That rear window though, it's fairly small and I do wish, once again, it had a rear wiper. I've driven this in quite deep snow and this thing just plows its way through everything. So the all-wheel drive system works great. There are two motors, one in the front, one in the back, and I haven't had an instance yet where we've been even close to getting stuck. And that has to do with, with good winter tires as well. But when you're not in dynamic mode, what I like is driving it around town they've kind of dumbed the accelerator pedal down. So the power delivery has, has really been smoothed out from low RPMs or basically from a stop, which gives you that more luxurious power, the smooth takeoff. And that's really important when you have this much torque. This has 512 foot-pounds of torque and 394 horsepower. And with that much torque, a lot of times, if you were uh, starting off, you could easily have a, a real jerky experience uh, when you're driving around town, but not with this type of setup at all. We also mentioned this has the air suspension that comes standard, but also you can get the adaptive suspension and the adaptive drive, and this also has that where it's monitoring the road like 500 times a second, and it's giving you the optimal uh, handling that you can get. And the ride quality is very, very good. It is not too traditional luxury, which is a good thing. So you do get a lot of road feel. The steering is firm. Once again, not too traditional luxury, which I think a lot of buyers in this type of segment will really like. So what's it cost to get into an I-Pace? Starting at 89900 for the base model, and it goes all the way up, this model, at $110,000, which is not too bad considering you are getting a premium luxury vehicle you saw the interior, you see the exterior. If you like that type of luxury and that type of look, really you should take a look at this one. If you want something more like modern, like the big huge screen in the middle and a very Spartan interior, well, you're not gonna get that with this Jaguar. So that's it for today's wet and slippery review in the I-Pace. Everyone say goodbye. Bye. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up, and if you want to see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.